out of work today. It's just coming down. It does that pretty often nowadays. But I've decided that I wanted to work on the kitchen on the van, but it's too wet right now. Even the dogs are wet. Of course, they don't have enough sense to stay out of the rain. Where are you going, dogs? They're going to their house, probably. Oh, there they are. Where are y'all going to? Y'all getting wet? Won't you get in the garage? Well, anyway, they ain't going to do it. But instead of opening the kitchen up and getting it all wet, which I don't want to do, I'm going to work on making the linear actuator. And right here is the stuff. If you can hear me over the rain, right here is the stuff that I'm going to use to make the linear actuator with. Including the drill. I'm, I'm going to get another drill because that's the one I actually use. But um, just some nuts and a washer, piece of all thread rod. And I cut these two pieces of conduit. One is a piece of three quarter inch conduit. The other is a piece of half inch conduit. These are both EMT electrical conduit. And got a couple of brackets to mount it to the door and to the kitchen. But that will come later. Okay. I guess I'll try to show you how I make a linear actuator out of this junk. I need to put you up on a tripod. This washer right here is going to be welded onto the top of this piece of pipe. One of the nuts is going to be welded into the top of this piece of pipe. similar to that. Okay, the piece of all thread rod will go into this. And Okay, to give you some idea of how this is going to work. What you have right here, you have this nut that's pretty much wedged into here. I'm going to weld that on, but right now it's pretty much just wedged on here. You got this by this washer that is double nutted. As, as you turn the all thread rod, of course, this is going to move this way, right? Which means this washer is going to move that way. Well, what you do after you get this stuff welded together, you take this pipe and put it over this way and weld the pipe to this washer. Now, all of this is inside, and when you hook a drill up right here, you turn this, it spins freely through the washer, and then it uses these threads and this nut to push this out of that pipe. That's the way my linear actuators work. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some welding on this nut. On the end of the pipe. One thing I'm going to do, got some grease right here. Before I even think about putting it, I was going to grease it after I got it all put together, but before I even think about putting it in there, I'm going to put a generous dose of grease on it. 
That way it don't have any kind of an excuse to mess up. And I'm going to put grease all up and down through here. Even around this part. Because it needs all the lube it can get to keep it moving, I guess. Now what I'm going to do, I want to weld this nut onto the all-thread rod. That way it's good and solid. It's held. Slide these back together, just like this, okay, you can see that this is all one piece now. Now I'm going to weld the washer to the pipe. That has okay, some thunder going. That has that all welded. It's not a daisy. Daisy gets scared in the thunder. Here we go. I have the drill chucked into the end of my homemade linear actuator. Let me back up a little bit. I can put a bracket on here. I will probably put a bracket something like this on there and that way I have something to mount to and this will be what will lift my kitchen. Lift it and lower it. I'll get another drill and the drill I'll take the controls out of it and just put a push button or a switch to a toggle switch probably and up will be picking the countertop up down will be putting the countertop down and it will all be automated but that's going to be for another day because it's too wet outside to do anything outside of the garage but I guess that's going to be my little video for today a uh, pretty easy way to make a little a linear actuator especially if you got a cordless drill you can use a cordless drill and it will work fine too 
This is actually the design that I used. I made a um, a second story on an old RV that I had. The roof of the RV would raise up and then you could fold walls down and you had an extra room the entire length. I had two bedrooms up there. The entire length of the top of the RV which was a 24 foot RV Class A RV and I had four of these a lot longer and they were one inch and three quarter inch pipe they were this size and one size above it for the outer and I had four drills of course and I could push a button and the whole top would raise up so I know this if it would lift an entire roof I know this will lift that kitchen so should be no problem with that I guess that's going to be about it for this little video uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you the next time.